What's up, everybody? My name is Adam, and I'm here with Jaylene. Hi. And you are listening to the number one fitness podcast in all of Whittier, California. In America. In, Am- in America. That's right. <laughs> no one else brings the kind of content that we do in Whittier. No one else has as many episodes as we do for fitness in Whittier. Woo! We are number one. He was number one. That's right. And we're excited to bring you part two of uh adam's big bear spartan race sprint adventure numero dos that's right part two uh and today's episode is going to be going over all of the training all of the preparation for the uh the spartan race that i did it was a sprint Um, so adam what was it like (laughs) what was the journey like (laughs) um okay so let me uh, let, let me get into what I did for my first couple races, and then we'll go into what I did for this race. Um, because what I had kind of planned on doing uh, for my past races was I, I figured, okay, obviously we got to run, right? Obviously we got to start running trails. I mean, I guess. Right? I mean, and, and, and I think <laughs> we both enjoyed doing that because it got us outdoors more. Who? Both of us. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, for those of you who don't know, it it is actually very, very hard for Jaylene to run. Um, yes, no, <laughs> <laughs> to to get me outside to like get me out of a gym. And Bro, into, just doesn't want to leave the gym. I don't. I, I love being in the gym, and you know, just f- far away from the sun and far away from. Uh, the elements and not, I mean, not nature, but kidding. you know, just, I, I like being indoors where you can control the temperature and yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, we, we started running uh, in trails. Whittier has, um, some pretty awesome trails over, uh, off of Kalima and Mar Vista that we were regularly going to indeed yeah, yeah, yeah. and got really good at them. And, uh, there's, uh, there's some trails that I've, I've mentioned before that are, over in uh, Hacienda Heights off of uh, Orange Grove and 7th that um, are a little bit more challenging than the trails off of Colima and Mar Vista. And we just spent a lot of time um, preparing on those running trails. Yeah, real stuff. I didn't actually run. <laughs> I mean, I, I ran some of the trails that Adam mentioned, um, but I didn't run all of them. Um, yeah, I did run some of them. Um, this is not about me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and but i think it's I th- they were difficult right like you would yeah 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 i mean i primarily didn't run um like the trail in hacienda heights the one off of seventh because it was just hard like i could barely walk it so we even we even so steep yeah we even talked to uh, talked to uh dr woods in, in uh in his episode um that where we talked with him he was saying that some of those hills over at shabaram um, like you would, why would you run those? You know, those are walking yeah. trails where you're pretty much hiking uphill. Well, these are the kind of trails that Spartan Race puts you through, the yeah. ones where it's so difficult to even walk. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and yet we're charged with having to run them. So yeah. I, I don't mean like, like I can't, like I'm not mobile, like I cannot run them or I cannot walk them. No, they obviously, you know, you can be capable of, of running them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they're just that crazy like they're just that steep and you run the risk of falling yeah you can definitely fall especially the ones off of seventh and orange grove you can definitely fall if you take a wrong step and you and you don't have your balance there so we we spent a lot of time uh being in the trail so that that covered that end of the training the running end of the training however uh in my first couple races i was so worried about my mile time and trying to get faster in my mile time that i really did um i i, I didn't realize the importance of pacing in a longer distance 
and the importance of rhythm and cadence and breathing and being on my toes or, or midfoot rather um, with the direction of my of my feet, me being upright as I'm going flat and uphill, like these things all all were uh, deal or not deal breakers. They, they were game changers for me yeah. um, for this race, and I just was not focused on them at all. I was just focused on trying to get faster in my mile time. When in all in all reality. Uh, your mile time isn't as important in a Spartan race because you've just got so many other factors like doing an obstacle or it, there being a lot of hills. Yeah. And so even if you do a flat, you know, five minute or five thirty or six minute mile, um, that is not going to be the same as when you're running on trails and running uphill and running downhill and running with stuff on your back and all and all this other stuff. So, um. So that was what I had done in in the past. That was I was focused on on faster mile time, and I was just running trails just for the, just for getting it in. In the gym, when I uh, when I had done my first uh, couple races, I was mainly focused on like CrossFit style workouts. Yeah. Um, and I and I kind of used the excuse of I need to be able to do high intensity movements and high intensity things. Um, very quickly at fast pace and just go, go, go. And that's what the, the races are like. You just got to keep going. You just got to keep moving. And, the, and CrossFit exercises are, are uh, very specific towards that. They, they time you. You have to do a certain amount of reps. You have to go for a certain amount of time. And, um, and, it, and it really does push, push your body. And that is, that is uh, Jaylene has never seen me sweat as much as when I do workouts like that. Yeah, no joke. It's, he's a freaking fountain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, and we even went over to uh, a CrossFit gym, CrossFit Resolute, um, in uh, in Whittier, California. Yeah, and we loved it there. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful, beautiful place right across the street from Pizza Press. And so that's why it's beautiful. That's what, that is kidding. exactly why it's beautiful. Awesome people there, um, and uh, and we're we're gonna have to have them on the show uh, pretty soon coming up. Yeah. Um, but we yeah we we were uh, really implementing a lot of CrossFit things uh, as I was preparing for. Um, my races. Yes. Um, now, hoo -hoo. Uh, <laughs> hoo -hoo. there was one race where I was unable to uh, flip the tire. I'm not ashamed to say that. I remember that. Yeah, there was one race I was unable to flip a tire. 400 pound tire. Um, it was at the end of a of the Monterey Super, and I just could not get my grip under that thing. I remember seeing him, and I'm like. What the hell are you doing? Keep yeah. going. Well, and again, uh, we talked about in the last uh, part of this of this uh, two part episode um, that you you pretty much felt the same thing at the end of this race, yeah, right? The I Big did. Bear race. Like I you did. you see me towards the end when I've already yeah, gone through sure. most of the hard hard stuff. You're depleted. I'm depleted. I'm I'm just oh yeah. so done. I'm just I'm just thinking. You know, don't let the person behind me pass me up, and uh, I'll be okay. It's not good enough. Yeah, but in that race, I I really did feel defeated. Yeah, I absolutely felt defeated. You at the looked Monterey like Super. you felt that way too. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and I don't know if I don't think you saw, um, but after um, that tire flip, my my uh, self esteem, my confidence, my attitude just completely shifted in the negative direction because I uh, after that was uh, the multi rig. And I and I failed the multi rig right after the tire. Yeah. And I had to do thirty burpees. And I and I gotta say, I probably stopped maybe three or four times in that set of thirty burpees, and this just was thinking like at the end of the race, the very end. Yeah. It was thirty burpees, and then I could walk walk across the finish line. Yeah, that's um, insane, though. Oh, what a way to end the race. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. No, it really did suck. Um, and and it was uh very depressing, very not motivating for me. Um. And you saw you saw how I was after I felt like a zombie. I just collapsed on the ground after that race. Yeah. Um, granted, it was a, it was a lot of hills in that race, but still, I should have been able to do well, and I did not. And and it was at that point that I I recognized the importance of being strong. Mm. When you go into these races, yes, you have to be an excellent runner. Yes, you have to have great um, body weight control and you have to be able to handle your heart rate getting super high and you go in high intensity, but you still need to be strong. Mm. Um, and so I, I shifted my focus um, to still doing high intensity exercises, but I, I trusted my skill as a runner. I trusted my skill as a runner 
to be able to carry me forward with the high intensity. As long as I could push myself with running, I knew I'd be okay. Um, and then as far as training in the gym, I just made sure that I had good mobility, um, good strength in the movements that we would be doing in the Spartan race. So I, I made sure that I could carry a bag, that I could run with a bag. That was really important for me because I had seen some of the live streams of the Spartan elites and they run with the bags on their yeah. back. Yeah. Um, and, and that was something where I was like, okay, if they're doing it, then I got to do it. Why, why is it so crucial to train um, with with running with the bag on your back? Well, I mean, you, you want to make sure that you are specifically strong for what you're specifically going to go through. So if I were to um, walk around with a barbell on my back, that still would not be the same as having that bag on my back. If I were to do barbell back squats or um, or you know have anything else on my back, it just would not be the same, especially because a sandbag... Um, is is not always going to be symmetrical. It's not always going to be even. There isn't going to be an even amount of weight on the left side and the right side. Sometimes you can't help that it, there's that there is uh, an imbalance there. It's not going to be weighing down on the shoulders the same way that a barbell is going to feel. All all of those things um, are exactly what you're going to be going through during the race, and you want to be you want to be ready for it. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, so those that definitely, uh, and then we also um, speaking about specificity. We we started um, doing a lot of rock climbing. Um, that was something that we both yeah we did um, decided to, as you as you heard from the last episode. We got memberships to a rock climbing gym called the Factory Bouldering. If you're interested in uh, learning about them, you can listen to the last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we we started going at least two times per week. And um, we tried to try to go three if we could because we, it was just so much so much fun. Honestly, it it honestly brought uh, f- a lot of um, fun to the journey of building grip strength and body weight control and challenging ourselves mentally and physically, all all of those things, and treating each and every route that we went through in uh, indoor bouldering, rock climbing, um, as an obstacle to conquer. Uh, and and along with that just gaining skill along the way. Yeah. So, um, and, and I think, I think Jaylene was able to, um, really find a sport for herself too, because we've, we've mentioned multiple times that, that, uh, Jaylene's got scoliosis and being able to be on a wall where weight is not put on your back, but you are holding on with your upper body and and almost pretty incredible, almost decompressing too. As you're climbing the wall, you're you're outstretched arms, reaching out good mobility. Yeah. The only, the only tricky part, I mean, completely, absolutely. The only tricky part is, um, uh, inevitably using one side more than the other sometimes, Uh, which is not most beneficial for, for my back. But, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to, to do that without having to worry about weight on my back. Yeah. And yeah. and it it's was nice. something that we had been able to do together. Yes. And that that was a beautiful thing yeah, in the midst really of fun. all the training in the midst of yeah. um especially because a lot of the things that I have to do for the Spartan race, Jaylene isn't really able to do. Um Yeah. So this was really nice for us to both be able to enjoy doing this together. Um awesome part of that journey. <laughs> Absolutely. Um so being specific in the gym Focusing on strength, I, I made sure that I was able to do at least a 405 deadlift before um, every single race because I, I did want to make sure I was strong. I did want to make sure that I could handle a 400-pound tire and not just handle it, but even more so uh, manipulate it. Mm-hmm. So I made sure 405 deadlift was um, was uh, done before, before race day. Um, I, I did not stay away from barbells, uh, as well as staying specific to training for the Spartan race. I also did strength training with barbells and, and kettlebells. Um, those were those, I just wanted to be strong, Mm -hmm. um, going into a race and still maintain, uh, my skills as a runner, as I was, um, running up these hills and trails. Uh, and then as far as the, uh, grip strength, which honestly, um, it's so funny because the reason why, I was like, I need to get a rock climbing gym membership. I need to start rock climbing. Was because uh, all the times that I've attempted the uh, the Z wall, mm-hmm. which is basically like the rock climbing wall, uh, I failed it. 
Mm. <laughs> I failed it. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was because of footwork and my grip strength. And I was like, you know what? I need to go rock climbing. I need well, to and, less and lack of body manipulation, right? Like yeah. not being able to maneuver your body in yeah. certain ways. And, yeah. and sure, sure. Yeah, rock climbers are um, just masterminds at that. Oh, yeah. And, we, and we've and we even said multiple times and... and uh, and it's just kind of known within the OCR community that the the people that win um, obstacles and do very well with obstacles are usually, especially the ones where you're hanging from things, are usually the rock climbers. Yeah. Um, parkour is kind of getting in there now too, and gymnastics. Um, but uh, but mainly you see the the uh, rock climbers thrive in uh, in, in those areas of uh, skill. So <laughs> it, it is funny because. Ever since we've gotten rock climbing uh, membership, I have not seen that obstacle. <laughs> yeah, that would I happen. I haven't. I haven't actually done it since then in the races that I've done. That is hilarious. Yeah, because because uh, <laughs> but I mean we we have done the uh, Olympus Olympus, and that's that's one where you do have to hold yourself up while going across a slanted wall. Um, but it's just you know I. I've yet to challenge myself in in the Z wall, yeah, um, and and apply the things that I've learned, and I'm and I'm looking forward to that opportunity. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they even put it in sprints anymore because mm-hmm. it seems like it's only in supers mm-hmm. and only in uh, longer longer distance races. Yeah, but if it's there, I'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, talk to us about nutrition. All right. So um, how did you prepare whew. nutritionally? So. Leading up to the race, um, I just wanted to make sure I fueled my body the best that I could. Um, and this was not just in proper macronutrients, uh, making sure that I had enough protein to to recover from everything that I was doing, mm-hmm. um, enough carbohydrates to be able to fuel my run uh, for, for every time I would run up the hill, um, and enough fat to make sure that I had plenty of uh, testosterone and mm-hmm. plenty of of strength yeah, um, and obviously overall, overall health of hormones. But I also was looking to micronutrients. I, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of vitamin D. Um, we started taking collagen in our coffee. It's been amazing. Yeah. And, and for me specifically, and we talked about this in, in our collagen episode, um, my runs, uh, after trail runs, my knees did not feel as achy. Um, Mm -hmm. and that's something that I definitely struggled with because, oh, especially at seventh and orange, um, the trails over there, uh, orange Grove, um, I'd run up those Hills. And then after you get all the way to the top, you got to come back down. And that's, uh, I think it's about 500 feet of elevation, um, gain elevation gain. So we're coming down 500 feet and, uh, that, that definitely beats on the knees. So when, I'm I'm done with those sessions. My knees are just absolutely killing me. I do I do my best with my techniques to be able to uh, minimize that damage as much as possible, but it does happen. Mm-hmm. So um, collagen was definitely a game changer. We also um, we also significantly increased the the uh, frequency in which we started drinking um, chicken broth and bone broth and whatever ways yeah. that we could get collagen into our diet. Um, and, and sodium, obviously, as, as I'm doing a lot of running, I'm doing a lot of sweating, I want to make sure that we are not depleting the body of, of um, electrolytes that I would need. Um, broth just seemed like a very good way to make sure that all of that was still there. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it really, um, when you were drinking you know, chicken broth or bone broth or whatever, um, during your workouts in preparation for the race, it just made all the difference. Yeah, it really did. Yeah. I, I started, um, uh, because of the, the sodium content in, in the broth, uh, I, I kind of used it as a, as a pre-workout to, to get my body pumped up during my strength lifts. Um, and not too much because obviously you don't want to be too pumped up. You don't want to be too, uh, overly hypertrophied uh, <laughs> before a workout, <laughs> but um, it was it was enough for me to start to get the blood flow going and to feel the muscles. Uh, I think I've mentioned it before in a podcast, but there was someone I, I knew who was taking salt pills as pre workout, and that was what he was using for his pump uh, to, to to get the the blood into the muscle and, and swell up the muscle with water and and all those things. That, and it was a really cool idea, and. I basically did kind of the same thing with uh, broth. I'd take a little bit of broth and start my workout. And I'd ease into it. 
Yeah, I'm, totally. No, you don't want to. You don't want to drink chicken broth and then do a CrossFit workout because uh, yeah, it might not stay down. <laughs> that's, that's true. There might be some digestive issues. Oh that yeah, go on there. Got to be careful with that. Yeah. Um, and obviously, as far as beverages, we we've continued to drink Zevias. Of course, mm-hmm. Zevia. We're not letting you down there. Yep. Uh, you know, sponsor us any day now. Hey. Uh, <laughs> it was funny. I I uh, I I told my my family. You know, they they uh, recently discontinued some of the sparkling water flavors that I actually like, and they're like, "Well, why don't you why don't you uh, send them a message and uh, tell them to bring it back?" I'm like, "Hey, just because I drink Zevia like I own stock doesn't mean I actually do own stock." <laughs> So they're like, hey, maybe you should contact them and tell them you drink stevia like you own stock. And <laughs> yeah, so um, yes, definitely stevia. And and the important thing about that is um, sometimes when you just need caffeine um, and that's all that you want, it's hard to find a good source for that because coffee has a lot of antioxidants, which quite frankly is not the most fun thing to drink before working out. Yeah. Um, you just run into a couple of digestive issues. And um, and if you're like me, I can't really drink coffee black. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. Um, so I try to put half and half in there. And sometimes it's hit or miss as to whether my stomach will agree with that or not. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I really don't want to, I don't, I really don't want to mess with that. And then there's drinks like uh, Celsius, which are, which I actually really enjoy, but uh, nine times out of ten, a Celsius will kind of give me anxiety, and especially if I'm lifting heavy, I don't want that kind of anxiety leading up to a big lift. I want to feel ready. I want to feel like I can engage my body, but not feel out of control. Sure. Um, so the Zevia Energy, which just has 120 milligrams of caffeine, and there's nothing else. It's just stevia and uh, the 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 flavoring they put in there and um, caffeine. And from a natural source and that is all I want and that's all I need and it gives me that and I get the energy that I need to without without any of the anxiety so um that was definitely a help and and really nice too when I was on an empty stomach and just didn't want to deal with any digestive issues um and the nice thing too is that it's not as carbonated as the uh, Zevia colas that they that they have come out with which you know you're guaranteed to start burping if you drink if you drink one of those <laughs> Um, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so what did your meals look like? Yeah. So, so my meals would, uh, would, would kind of look like, um, a, a, a pound of beef. And, okay. And mention, um, calorie consumption if you can. Yeah. 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 Um, it, it would kind of look like a pound of beef <laughs> and, and I'm still kind of doing intermittent fasting. I, I, I only eat about two meals. Um, but I, it would look like about a pound of beef. Um, about eight to 12 ounces of vegetables. I would probably add in there some raw cheese, some raw cheddar cheese. Like literally raw, like the brand, like it would say raw. Yeah. yeah the bread, the bag that it, that's, that it holds the cheese would say raw cheese. Um, which honestly has been so good. Like, uh, well, let me tell you, wait first, I need, I need an audience to be this witness when Adam and I first started oh, working out, and, well, okay, Adam's been doing it longer than I have, but when I when I really started to get into working out with him and, and fitness and nutrition and all of that, I went on a major kick. Like I wanted to be completely holistic and raw and try all these raw cheeses and raw milks and, yeah. and do all of this. I Hit brought him... <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> I brought him into Sprouts and I was like, smell it. Doesn't it smell amazing? And he was like, no, I don't like it. And I was like, try this raw cheese. And he was like, no, I don't want to try it. And now he loves it. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Jaylene has been nothing but a positive influence on me. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, honest, no, honestly, I think I think uh, just like I uh, like to stay in the gym and not be as adventurous and go outside and and. Uh, we just went to the beach today and, did, and, yeah. and went over there. And I don't normally ever get in the water. I went in the water today. I think I think Jaylene just helps me to be more adventurous. And it's not <laughs> just with activities; it's also with what I put into my body. Mm. Uh, she was she was the one who who pushed me to do essential oils, um, raw milk, raw cheese, mm. um, more more organic stuff. Yeah, I didn't step foot into Sprouts until uh, Jaylene forced me to. And, uh, <laughs> 
And if and if I didn't, then I would have never met my my uh, Zevia addiction. So it's true. Um, and I Stevia. Have, and Stevia addiction. Yeah, I have yeah. you to thank. So so thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, definitely trying to be as organic as possible. Yeah, a pound of beef, uh, eight to twelve ounces of vegetables. I had mixed some cheese in there, and honestly. Um, I did mess with a little bit of artificial sweeteners this round of uh, nutrition. There's a barbecue sauce that Jaylene and I found that was uh, sugar-free. Yeah. It uses a little bit of sucralose in there. We, uh, we, don't, we don't usually recommend anyone uh, take artificial sweeteners, and this was just uh, because of our lack of self-control when we saw that the barbecue <laughs> sauce was sugar-free um, and that it actually tasted amazing. Um, and you can ask some of the some of the people over here at Core Evolution too. They they absolutely agree. It's amazing, amazing, amazing tasting uh, barbecue sauce. And uh, I I try to have barbecue sauce few and far between because I I do not want that much actual sugar in the real barbecue sauce. Yeah, there's a lot. Jeez. So it, it was it was nice to be able to not partake in that. Um, much sugar when I eat barbecue sauce through that sugar-free barbecue sauce, which uh, honestly is, again, it's just because of a lack of self-control on my own part. <laughs> and it, and it, I did kind of uh, make an excuse that sucralose was at least the last ingredient on the list of the ingredients. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're imperfect as well. We do make decisions based off of our own cravings and I do crave barbecue sauce every once in a while. Um, <laughs> almost as much as I crave uh, tapatio, which is another thing that, that I, I used as a, as a sauce for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and very regularly I'd, I'd still have tortillas. I'd still, I'd still, uh, mix that, that beef and vegetable mix and put it in some tortillas and have that as my carb source. Um, but um, main carb sources were from fruit on honestly. So, um, yeah. strawberries, bananas, um, pears, a uh, little bit of watermelon, not really, not really too much, but, um, How about cantaloupe? no, no cantaloupe this time around. <laughs> uh, I miss cantaloupe so much, but, but not, not this time around <laughs> mainly. Yeah. Strawberries, uh, strawberries, bananas. And uh, unfortunately, um, a couple times grapes, which grapes is like a super, super, sword you know part of my life because i uh i can i can go through a whole thing of grapes no problem Jeez. um and i will pay the price you know what i feel like your lack of self-control with grapes is like my lack of self-control with cherries i would literally buy a pound of cherries and finish it in one sitting it, <laughs> i don't know why oh my and it's goodness. and it's bad because you know it is bad. berries you can have a lot of but the the grapes and 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 uh having a whole cup full of grapes can be definitely bad news yeah um when i when i was growing up um i would eat ice cream for dinner the end of the day with my family me too and um there were there were a couple times when i thought i was being a little bit healthier by instead of having a cup of ice cream i was having a cup of grapes uh and unfortunately it's uh it's not much better folks it's not much better <laughs> in hindsight looking at the nutritional facts nope uh, um, nope <laughs> should have just had the ice cream <laughs> <laughs> all those times uh, what was i thinking but anyways getting back to nutrition for the race that was pretty much what i was doing leading up to and, and obviously i would ch switch out beef for chicken we also had ground turkey so i i was mixing it up it wasn't just all uh beef the beef i was using by the way 90 10 i i like and enjoy the 90 10 Oh yeah, I forgot. Mm. Oh, ooh. Ooh. Um, eggs. eggs, eggs. I've talked about this. We talked about this in another. I, I can't believe I forgot. See, I forget about eggs. I forget <laughs> about them. I don't know why. They're the best, gosh darn thing that's ever happened to me, uh, besides Jaylene. Um, oh, but well, that's nice. Nice to know I'm um, there, right up there with eggs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was definitely having a lot of eggs, and I would and I would mix that in with the um, the chicken, the ground turkey, the beef, and vegetables, and I would and I would put whatever sauce I wanted in there because eggs pretty much go well with barbecue sauce or tapatio, so mm -hmm. they're uh, they're in. So they're, they're uh, in. They're in. They're, you know, <laughs> let's, uh, it's unlike Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah that those were those were pretty much where i was where i was at with nutrition and beverages like i said zevias um w w water uh sometimes 
<laughs> when I, that when was I, a hard word for you to say. <laughs> that was hard. W- 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 water. Water. <laughs> yeah, when I when I absolutely or needed it. That's from what the water boy. Well, yeah. I'm, well, I'm, I'm a w- w- water boy. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> Mama said uh, I needed that tackling fuel. Mm. No, anyways, uh, <laughs> water, water, just when I needed it, because uh, again, I, I am a flawed human being, and that is one of my pet peeves. Mm-hmm. Uh, not pet peeves. That's a, that's one of my downfalls. Oh, there my, you go, downfall. Yeah, yeah not yeah, pet peeves. Yeah, my pet peeve is that I would like to have uh, Zevia in my hand instead of a water bottle. It annoys me when I have water instead of Zevia. It's a pet mm. peeve of mine. So that was what I had leading up to um, the the week prior to race day. So leading up to race day, that that specific week, I definitely was having more water. I was definitely having a little bit more sodium. And um, I was ramping up my calories a little bit leading up to that. I had had brought calories down to lose a little bit of weight. That way I wasn't carrying over 200 pounds with me in the race. Yeah. uh, closer to, to 190, um, so that I would, I would make sure that I was light enough to perform better, mm-hmm. <laughs> make it easier myself on those, uh, obstacles. Um, but leading up to the race, I was definitely ramping up cause again, I wanted to feel strong. I wanted to feel ready. I wanted to feel fueled for my performance. And that is what I did. Um, race day. Okay. Race day. I did something this time around that I did not do any other time, which was, make sure was which was to make sure that I did not put anything into my body that I knew um would not significantly damage it um so let's flash back to last year uh big bear race um Jaylene probably remembers this cuz I cuz it really sucked for for me and I I did not feel good but we went and had coffee. I think we had coffee or I drank coffee that morning. Yes, we did. We had coffee before we left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this wasn't the Chino Hills one, but but we did have coffee for sure. I think I had a Zevia also. Uh, I and, think so, yeah. Oh, we had pizza the night before. We did, we did have pizza um, the night before. Yeah, yeah, we had like pizza the night before. And, and uh, that morning, my stomach was just awful. Oh, I did not feel ready for that race yeah. last year for for the Big Bear Beast. Uh, did not feel ready at all. Uh, in fact, when we were driving over there, I don't know what I was drinking, but um, there's a Carl's Jr. that's right off of where you turn to park for the Spartan race. And I had to stop because I, my stomach was just killing me and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, did not have a fun trip to the restroom there and came out feeling like, Oh crap. Like I just do not feel ready for this race. Yeah. And the last thing that you want before a 13 mile run is for you to not feel good digestively. You do not want to be right, thinking about right. that while you're running. Um, and you definitely don't want it hindering you while you're running and you know, it, it affects your, it affects your performance period, but it also affects your, your confidence and your, your attitude and your mood going into the race. And Mm -hmm. it definitely did for me. So I, I definitely made it a point that before going into this race, I was going to make sure that whatever food I ate, it was going to be 100% in harmony with my stomach, 100%. So I made sure I, I tested everything in the morning just to make sure, hey, if I have this, am I going to feel okay? Hey, if I have this, am I going to feel okay? Uh, I had no coffee before the race, no coffee, because I did not want to risk um, something disagreeing with me. Yeah. I did have, um, I did have um, the uh, Life Aid Fit Aid and the Life Aid um, Focus Aid. Mm-hmm. So um, the, the Fit Aid and the Focus Aid both have about 45 calories each and about i think it's around like 45 grams of of um mil- sorry 45 milligrams of caffeine so something not like too that. much yeah, no. wasn't too much caffeine which was absolutely I think perfect it's like 45 to 55 or something yeah, and it's from like herbamate and um yeah. and green it's natural tea sources and uh so so it wasn't going to give me anxiety which is which is what i wanted to to um to how how it should have played out i didn't want that anxiety so that's why i planned on drinking those instead of uh too much caffeine from coffee and zevia and celsius i think i did have a you know i think i did have a celsius before that race and that's kind of what kind of disrupted my my digestive system during that race but uh for this one just the fit aid and focus aid so that i had uh, nootropics for myself 
going into the race. I felt focused, felt ready. I had branch chain amino acids in my system. And I also had two bananas just to make sure my carb intake was ready. Um, and I had enough fuel to be able to last me for the race. Um, I actually don't think I had enough bananas before that race. Um, mm. I, I probably could have done with a little bit more. I burned about, um, 1200 calories in that whole, uh, race. And that was just the sprint, um, 1200 calories in that, in that sprint race climbing. Um, I, th- I, don't, I don't even remember the elevation now that I, I think I mentioned in the last big bear sprint episode, but it's like 3000 to 5,000 feet of elevation gain. So it was a lot of Hills, a lot of tax on the glycogen storage of the legs. So I, I probably should have fueled myself a little bit better, um, with a little bit more bananas. Uh, <laughs> I suggested, or I do suggest, I think um, next time we should play with berries and see how you feel with berries instead of bananas. I'm just thinking um, berries are lighter. They don't weigh as heavy on your stomach as bananas, Um, but... You have some strawberries. Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. And I also... I also think that they're a, a little bit of a quicker source of energy. I feel like bananas just take a while to, uh, they take a little, a little bit of time to digest and then to kind of hit you. Yeah. But berries are pretty quick. Yeah, it's true. I, and I do have to play around with that. I think, um, I think there's, there's an unlimited fuels, uh, that you can put into your body, sources of fuels that you can put into your body. And, um, you just have to find the one that's going to work best for you and your digestive system. I may not digest berries and bananas the same way that you digest berries and bananas. Something that might mess you up that works perfectly fine for me. And so I think the, the important thing to take away from especially the morning of your race day is to make sure that you do not have anything that is going to upset your stomach. That you spend time learning how certain foods affect you so that you will have confidence putting food into your body and knowing that you're going to be okay and fueled for the race. Absolutely. So we talked about pre-race training. Yeah. Pre-race training. We talked about pre-race nutrition. Uh huh. We talked about all that fun stuff. What about after the race? Pizza. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> did we have pizza? What did we did we have um, pizza after the race? We did. We had a, a meet and greet. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, we did have pizza. I had well no no. Uh-huh. Hold on. I had bananas right after, that's for sure. Immediately after. Immediately yes. after. A okay. couple hours oh. after. Oh, I have to say this. Uh it I I keep I keep telling myself, don't do it, don't do it. But every single time I do it, mm-hmm. I don't know why. When will you learn? When will I learn? But right after the race, when you get off of the, when you get out of the Spartan race, um, they hand you a bunch of stuff. They hand you a bunch of stuff. So you, first, first thing you get is a medal. Woohoo! You finish the race. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, you get handed a, an assortment of marketing tactics. Uh, (laughs) sponsorship marketing tactics just thrown at you um which include bananas you know hashtag bananas (laughs) hashtag Um, bananas uh, (laughs) i don't know if they're sponsored by local farms but um no dole yeah you do you do get a banana um which is awesome because i i can i can definitely uh i can definitely eat that after a race that's for sure um but um, you also get handed a fit aid, which I also very much appreciated. And then you get a cliff bar, um, a cliff protein bar and a, uh, some sort of, um, like Gatorade like beverage this year. It was uh, body armor. Um, and they did at least have a light version and a, and a regular version of it. Um, because it's going to have a lot of sugar in it, which honestly, uh, I told myself not to get it. I really did tell myself not to get it, but I got it and I drank it and I paid for it because my my stomach does not do well with a whole bunch of sugar just being poured down the stomach. Um, I did say no to the Cliff Bar because in past races, um, I've taken the Cliff Bar and again, stomach just felt horrible. Um, 
So uh, you know, you just gotta you just gotta pay attention to what affects your body. And yeah, you need, listen and to your body. You need to remember those things before you grab something that somebody hands you and you just put it in your body. <laughs> yeah, you just, just food. <laughs> Fuel. Yeah. Ah. After the race, you're pretty much just thinking like, I just need something. I just need something in my body. Um, so, you know, I there, I guess that's better than nothing. Um, but yeah, I, I had a banana. I had a Fit Aid and pretty much down the Fit Aid right after the race. Yeah. I was just, yeah, I almost ate the can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like telling Jalen, because I had a bunch of mud on me. I didn't want to open the can with, with mud on me. And I'm like, Jalen, can you open this? <laughs> Hurry. Open it. <laughs> Open the banana. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> so you, you do get some fuel sources right after the race. And um, honestly, the banana is great. Fit A is great. But the um, I, I would I would just steer clear of the Gatorade and stuff. Just wait till you can get some food into your body or uh, or water um, or another source of uh, fuel that you can that you've brought or something like that. So yeah, um, no no need to uh, mess up your digestive system just because you you're could in a even time have, of desperation. You could even have berries after the the race. Yeah, yeah, just have a whole case of strawberries. Yeah, that's what I would. That's what I would do. Mm-hmm. But um, after the after that, um, I don't think I ate for another maybe three four hours. Three. Yeah, it was like yeah three, three hours for sure. And uh, that's when we met over at Pizza Press. At that point, um, post-race, you know, this is what I got to say about post-race. Because you're not – you just finished what you were trying to perform well for. You definitely can do with uh, replenishing your glycogen storage and eating in a surplus so that you recover well. But this is what I got to say about post-race. Do not treat it as an excuse – to eat whatever you want. Okay? Do not treat post race as okay, yeah, we just finished a Spartan race. Heck, now I can have donuts and pizza and pies and whatever the <laughs> hell I want. Uh, donuts, pizzas, and pies. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Um, no, 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 no. You've got another race that you're training for that's probably going to be just either a month away or a few months away. Um, and that's no use. Um, damaging your your uh, chances of recovering well and 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 um, actually coming back stronger from this race uh, and actually even keeping yourself away from the bad habits that you could fall into um, Jaylene and I did have pizza after the race but we I didn't even do the race <laughs> I shouldn't have had pizza <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't go overboard and you had planned no. you had planned to have yeah, that pizza I we did. both yeah. we both planned to have pizza and so, um, as far as tracking and making sure we didn't go overboard in calories, yeah. As as funny as that seems to someone to think, you just ran a Spartan race. Why are you counting calories? Well, because I care. Yeah, I care to count the calories still. Even I, great, I burned twelve hundred calories. That's great. Okay, so I can eat twelve hundred more. But let me tell you, that's not that much more when it comes to food. Yeah, it's so really not. If I was to just go crazy and eat everything I wanted, I could. I could easily go over that. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to um, put myself in a position where I'm putting myself in bad habits that are going to keep me from coming back stronger from this race. I do not need to over exaggerate a surplus of calories. I can just make sure that I um, compensate for the calories that I've burned in the race and the calories that I'm burning throughout the day. Um, Because at the end of the day, a Spartan race is not this, this, um, what's what's the word I'm like? it's it's not this crazy thing um that is without measurable stress on the body mm. um it's not like what? just kidding i i, I know it's kind of hard to understand but like <sighs> it, it how can i explain this it when you do a workout and and you work out for a whole hour that's a measurable amount of damage that you're doing to your body, and you'll need a measurable amount of recovery time. Um, and a Spartan race is no different. It may take you an extra day to recover. Um, it may take you an extra week to recover. I don't know. You may have burned 600 calories. You may have burned 1,200. Heck, you may have burned 2,000 calories. But there's a measurable amount of damage and a measurable amount of calories that you've that you've um, that you've burned. And if you just treat it as this 
black hole of calories, this black hole of damage of like, oh my gosh, I can do whatever I want because I just did a Spartan race. Like it's some <laughs> magical event where it doesn't matter what you do after that. Mm. It's all forgiven because you've done a Spartan race. That's just mm. not the case. Yeah. That's just not the case. Um, you got to get right back onto your nutrition. You got to get right back onto your training. Um, obviously, you can take the time that you need to to recover. Um, but I'll, but I'll be honest, my upper body was not that sore after the Spartan race and I still trained upper body after the race. My lower body definitely sore, gave it the time that it needed to recover. Um, I spent time doing a lot of, of, uh, stretches for the lower body because my hips after all of that hill running and walking, uh, were definitely tight, um, ankles, knees, hips, uh, lower back a little bit. All of those areas needed a little bit of attention yeah. with um, with um, kind of damage control, and I made sure that I did that. I made sure that been. I was in Epsom salt baths, making sure that I'd relax the muscles as much as possible so that they could heal. Yeah, we would even encourage some chiropractic care or some sort of yoga or massage therapy after after a race um, after a race like that. Yeah, just to get your body back into. Yeah the place that it needs to be yeah and before before i get into this uh this last um section which is gear okay um okay. not steroids um <laughs> just spartan Aww. racing gear um i i do not want to go um any further with this episode without thanking dr woods for everything that he mm. um has helped us with absolutely um i in training for this spartan race in particular i uh damaged my shoulder i damaged my wrist my wrist Sorry, my wrist. I damaged my wrist. Um, <laughs> damaged my shoulder, damaged my wrist, and also dropped a weight on my toe. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Woods is a friggin' magician and was able to get me in this Spartan race, um, able to perform better than, in my opinion, better than I have in all of my other races um, through the therapy that, that he uh, helped me with and his services. So um, Woods Chiropractic, give them a visit because mm -hmm. um, they know what they're doing. Absolutely. Dr. Woods knows what he's doing. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much. He listens to this podcast, so I hope that uh, he hears this. Um, so yeah, going into this last section, uh, gear. What did I wear? What did I, what did I bring I'm, with I'm me? I'm supposed to ask the question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so Adam, what did <laughs> you wear? Um, so in past Spartan races, <laughs> it was all trial and error. It was all trial and a lot of error. Um, Emphasis on the error. On the error. A lot of error. Um, I just couldn't pinpoint what I wanted to wear. Um, Freaking girl. Man. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, nobody wants farmer's tans after a race. Uh, yeah, no. So I couldn't wear a tank top and, no. and a, and a t-shirt. No. Uh, so I had to wear something that was going to keep me from getting a farmer's tan. Uh, <laughs> no joke, people. No joke. I wore long sleeve uh, compression shirt uh, underneath a, a regular shirt mm -hmm. uh, in my first couple races. And honestly, I felt very, very comfortable doing that. I didn't want a bunch of scrapes on my body. I didn't want that to, to hinder me in my performance. Um, but I also kept in mind like, hey, there's guys that do this shirtless. So come on. Stop being, uh, you know, what, what are they saying? Uh, oh, what was that movie? Madagascar? When the, when the lemur is like, you are, you are all pansies. You're, <laughs> you're all pansies. Stop being a pansy. Um, yeah, so event, event, but this race, I didn't, I didn't uh, follow that suit. But um, yeah, so clothing, 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 clothing and gear. Uh, Let's get to the number one asked question here is gloves. Should you wear gloves? Should um, you? Should you? Mm. Um, well, I wore gloves on every single race, mm. um, every single race up until this Big Bear race. And uh, my performance did not change. So I, I can definitely say um, gloves are not necessary. Uh, especially because even, even the best of gloves can still be negatively affected by water, no matter what, um, yeah. you can, you can get those gloves wet and the grip is gone. Uh, and it really doesn't matter what kind of gloves you get. I've, I've tried different kind of gloves and, and no matter what water negatively affects them, you just kind of lose your grip. Yeah. So the best thing that you can do instead of wearing gloves is um, making sure that you just dry your hands as best as possible in grass or in dirt. 
Um, and that is that is one way that I have found during a race is the quickest way to dry out the hands before um, doing like the multi rig or climbing on Olympus and your hands are wet or you feel like they're sweaty or whatever. You, you just grab a, a huge uh, chunk of dirt or grass or whatever you can find and rub your hands together and make sure they're dry. And you can kind of use it as chalk. It's basically, you know, nature's chalk. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, it's and beautiful. it's a beautiful thing. Nature's helping you. I love it. Um, so that, that is what I've, uh, decided to do from now on. Also, I'm, I'm not going to bring gloves with me anymore because it, it's just an extra factor that I don't need to worry about. Um, now with that being said, the reason why I continued wearing gloves up until this point was because in my very, very first race, when I failed an obstacle and went down to do burpees, um, I immediately got a cut on my hand because I did not pay attention to where I was dropping down to do burpees and uh, ended up getting like a, a wood chip, you know, stuck in my hand or something. And, and it ended up uh, cutting my hand and it affected my grip later on. And I was like, oh, I should have put my gloves on right now. And that way I <laughs> wouldn't uh, have this injury. Yeah. When in reality, I probably should have just watched where I was burpeeing. Um, but, uh, yeah, gloves are great protection while you're doing burpees on the ground. But at the end of the day, people do this shirtless. So do you really need gloves? Probably not. Um, I'm not going to use gloves anymore. Your grip does just fine with your own, uh, with your own hands, especially if you've been training to have strong grip. Um, so Build that grip up, build that finger strength especially, and then use what's around you to dry those hands. Don't dry it on your clothes because if you just jumped in the water, your clothes are going to be wet too and it's not going to help you. Just find some dry dirt, pick it up, and uh, use it as chalk. Uh, Yeah. So uh, let's talk about clothing as far as t-shirt and pants. All right. Uh, Okay. So for t-shirts, like I said, long sleeve uh, shirt. Um, that I had used in the in the past. This race, I ended up just wearing a a, a performance style T shirt. That was that was it. Just a performance style T shirt. Um, one that wasn't going to hold a lot of water. You definitely do not want to wear co- cotton. Do not do not do not wear cotton. Anything that holds water, don't wear it. So um, much absorption. <laughs> yeah, you do not want to be weighed down by anything. And uh, and if you jump in water and you're wearing cotton, you will be weighed down. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially because there is a rule that whatever you bring onto the course, you have to take with you across the finish line. So you are going to be carrying that wet T-shirt throughout the whole race. Yeah. Uh, you can't just ditch it. So, um, yeah, do not wear cotton. Uh, and that goes for pants as well. Uh, and this is this is a mistake that I made, I think, in my – Second race, and then in my Chino Hills race, uh, Chino Hills race, it was not cotton. It was just a thick pair of pants. And I thought, I don't know why, but I thought I was going to do okay and uh, with those pants. And they absolutely absorbed with water. And there is nothing, oh, there's nothing more upsetting than having your pants soaked with water while you're running a race. And that was, that was Mm. super crappy. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, make sure that you wear, uh, clothes that are not going to hold water. So as, uh, for pants, as you may imagine, there's a bunch of performance OCR pants out there. Um, and they're probably amazing. They're probably all great. Um, I found a little bit of a hack though, um, to getting pants that are going to do just fine, uh, in OCR and evidently in the ocean as well, because I wore them today <laughs> at the beach. Yeah. Um, and they, they did perfectly. Um, so if you look around at women in, in gyms or wherever, which, uh, don't do that. That's creepy. But if you do, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but if you do, you notice most women wear pants that look, uh, pretty moisture wicking. Like they, it, it does not look like those kind of pants would ever hold water. Um, because they're made out of either spandex or polyester or both or blend or whatever. Um, and so when I realized this, I was like, well, why don't I just get a pair of those pants? OCR pants are like a hundred dollars. <laughs> OCR pants are like $120. That's yeah, insane. I know. I and know. you go to, you go to target and these women pants are like <laughs> 20 bucks. We got it made. Yeah. I'm just kidding. So, um, I mean, don't get it twisted. Some girls pants are insanely expensive yeah so jaylene went with me to target his butt looked beautiful oh gosh better than mine hey oh gosh 
we uh we we picked out a couple of pair of pants at uh, at target and um i made sure it was all black i was not going to do a little purple stripe or uh you know any weird pink and bright blue nothing crazy like that he wasn't fun i'm just <laughs> kidding i wasn't trying to make a statement or anything um i found a pair of black women's pants um that actually had some pretty uh very um oh, what's the word i'm looking for they, they had pockets that were that were very yeah like the side cell phone pockets yeah yeah, yeah. very convenient super convenient yeah totally us girls gotta have our phone or ipod shuffle is an ipod shuffle a thing i don't know anyway oh gosh we gotta <laughs> shuffle <Wow. laughs> we gotta have our phones in our pockets while we jog and whatever and do stuff do stuff well we go to the store because twerking yoga we <laughs> or zumba, we, zumba. Wear, we wear our active wear when active we wear, yeah. active wear to go grocery shopping exactly so uh i got myself a pair of women's pants and i uh i wore them they felt amazing uh there's a there's a little bit of a of a issue with the uh you know mid nether region area but you know once you get past that uh, it, it all works out pretty darn well, especially if you have a good t-shirt that covers it, <laughs> um, which I did have and I try to regularly have when I wear those pants can be a little rever- re- revealing, revering, Reve- it or, can be a little revering. Uh, yes, it can. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, when you're in the middle of a race, you're not really thinking about those things anyways. So it's all, it's all good. Um, so women's pants. Um, now the only issue that I did run into with those pants, the only issue that I did run into, uh, was that they would fall down on me. The, these pants were constantly falling down. They were falling off my butt and, uh, it was kind of annoying and, and, uh, I knew I needed to fix something. So yeah. what I did Major was, butt edge going on. Yeah. I, I took a, I, what I did was I took an old, um, jawstring from an old pair of pants that I, uh, old pair of workout pants that I had really old. I wasn't using them anymore. Um, and it was the right length that I needed. And I poked a hole through the women's pants, which I don't know if this is true of all women's pants, but it had like a hollow inside right there. It was like the, the, the part of the pant that covers your belly. Cause I women mean, have to color their, I mean, cover yeah, their bellies. they usually do only because, um, I mean, with the exception of these pants, there's usually already a string there Yeah, yeah or yeah. it's somewhere within the inside of the pants. I just picked the one pair of pants that did not have the drawstring. Right, attached. right. Yeah. So I just poked a hole through that, through those pants and, uh, put a drawstring in there. Um, use the pen technique. I put a I put a pen through the hole and attached it to the jawstring and put it through. That's a really really cool mm-hmm. little hack. Yeah, hack. so creative. And um, and I gave myself a jawstring and boom, fixed all of my problems. <laughs> Absolutely. Now I have the perfect OCR pants that only cost me twenty bucks. And I've put them through a race. I've put them through the beach. I've put them through multiple hill runs. And they have not ripped or worn out on me. <laughs> so that's pretty darn good value if you yeah. ask me. Um, so go to your local Target. Pick yourself up a pair of women's pants, whether you're a woman or a man. <laughs> uh, uh, or and, undecided. Or undecided, I guess. Yeah, I guess you can just do that. Um, and uh, th- those worked out absolutely perfect for me. And it was just the right compression. Um, just the right compression. Uh, to allow me some blood flow and good mobility and not too much compression to where I felt like I was going to over pump those, uh, those quads and hamstrings, Mm -hmm. which I did run into that issue. I I did wear, uh, I don't know why I decided to do this, but I wore the women's pants and compression pants underneath and that just did not go well for me. Yeah. Um, I think it was too much. Yeah, definitely too much. Uh, another hack is going down a little bit lower than the nether regions, um, which is socks. Um, what do you wear for, what do you wear for socks? Um, I, I did make the mistake one race of using, um, a blend of cotton and polyester and spandex, which obviously because it had cotton in there, it was very uncomfortable to, to wear. And so what I did in my last race, which I'm going to continue to do, instead of buying like OCR socks, which are also relatively expensive, um, you can just go and get yourself um, the polyester spandex um, dress socks. And those actually do a very good job of allowing you to have socks on without holding any water. That's really cool. Yeah, I did yeah. not have any issues. I did not have any issues with holding water. Um, in the in the socks in the shoes during the race with the uh, dress socks on, so that was perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Uh, last bit of gear that I can think of was um, shoes. Um, I continue to use my Innovate X Talons uh, for this race, and I think this is the last race that I'm going to use them with. I did get a little encouraged in this race because um, up until this race, I had been wearing regular socks with the X Talons, and uh, it, it didn't feel like the shoes were going to make it after this race. But uh, this is the X Talons fourth race that I've put them through, mm. and many, many, many hill runs and trail runs. And they have not ripped. Um, they have not torn. Uh, the uh, tread underneath the um, what are those? The, the spikes, the the grip that the shoes have underneath them um, for for trail running. Traction. Yeah, the traction, all that stuff. That it has gone down a little bit since since I bought them, of course, because they're I'm still using them, so it's going to go down. Um, but these shoes are still usable after five races, and I've heard a lot of stories of shoes that are not usable after like three. Yeah, so, um, thank you, Innovate. Yeah, so Innovate has done a really, really good job with that shoe, and they even came out with a new one that has a little bit of a heel. The one that I have is, has a zero drop, um, so uh, you can definitely look at them for, for shoes. Very comfortable, uh, very well for performance, and durability is, has just been insane. I've put them through so many hours of, of hill running, uphill and downhill, and through four races, and they have done just great, so... Mm. Uh, I might put them through another race. I don't know. I might try to get some new uh, new innovates, the new yeah. the new version of the X Talons, but uh, we'll see. Um, I th- can't think of any other S- gear. Something actually, I don't think you've mentioned yet is um, the fact that you wear a hat during your race. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So um, literally, the only reason I'm wearing a hat is because I hate the way I look in pictures with that stupid headband. He's cute. Stupid headband makes my ears look big. I got poofy hair, and it does not look photogenic. Um, it's okay. You're not supposed to. But I, I, I feel I'm I'm running my I'm racing my truth, and feel like a badass mm-hmm. when I wear a hat. Um, Absolutely, during the baby. race. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I found myself a hat. We, we actually spent multiple days looking at, in, uh, Ross markets for a cheap Ross hat. retail stores. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what I meant. Ross <laughs> retail stores, um, looking for a very cheap hat that yeah. I could ruin. And we came upro- up upon this, uh, this Puma hat. Puma. Puma. A Puma Matata. Um, <laughs> we came ac- across this Puma hat that um, is all polyester, I think it is. I think so. Yeah, it's like all polyester. Yeah. So it's actually very, very easy to wash, uh, to dry clean and to wash. And um, I, I wear it near every day because of how easy it, it is to wash. And then uh, put it through a race and, yeah, it, it was easily washable. And uh, so I, I decided to uh, wear it for my race and put the the – the bandana or whatever that is, the little headband sure, thing over fair. the hat. And yes, it did stay on. Uh, was just fine and lasted me the whole race. It was good. Went underwater with it on even and it still stayed in place. So yeah, definitely worked out for me. And I, I think I'll continue to do that just to keep uh, sweat out of my eyes and uh, <laughs> keep myself looking uh, quite fashionable. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, th- I think that's it. I mean, I, yeah. I, I did I did wear my wearable, my... Uh, my um what is this thing called the samsung gear pro uh fit gear pro or gear fit there you go samsung gear fit pro Hmm. um and it was able to track my my running uh during the race on uh, map my run so Hmm. uh it it did last very uh it it was able to go underwater with me it was able to go in the elevation through the dust all that stuff um it's uh waterproof to a point uh, but enough to be able to go through a Spartan race, so that was that was nice. Yeah, um, and that definitely helped me with understanding where I was in that race, mm. um, and so that that'll be a huge part of me preparing for the next race. Like I, I was able to see where I slowed down, what mile I was slowing down, where the elevation gain was, so I could I could honestly give you the, the correct answers to what elevation gain was there because I had that on. Um, but that's just great information to take with you after a race because that is your performance right there. It's going to track your heart rate. It's going to track your speed. It's going to track um, your cadence. It's going to track the elevation, um, all of those things. And if you can have that information and know where your weaknesses are, then you know what to work on for the next race. So that's a really cool tool to have 
uh, before going on one of these Spartan races. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, very nice. I think that about covers it, right? I think that yeah. was all of the all of the guidance that we can give for training. So before we close, give us three takeaways. Three takeaways. Three takeaways from the race. Uh, just three, huh? Th- three takeaways from the race or from training? From really? actually, you know what? Let's do three takeaways from both the race and training. Okay, so three three takeaways from from uh, from the training aspects of it. Um, number one, you've got to be a great runner. You've got to be a great runner. You can be, you can come into the race strong. Uh, you can even come into the race with good endurance, but if you cannot run well, you will not do well. There's uphills, there's downhills, and you got to make sure that you, um, you got to make sure that you are a good runner when you go into these races. Number two, you've got to make sure that you know what food does to your body so that you know how to properly fuel yourself and you know what's going to prevent you from being able to perform well. So you don't want to have anything that's going to digestively mess you up. You want to have food that's going to make you feel good and, and um, that's going to make you perform well. And number three, uh, make yourself a race day playlist on Spotify. I've, that's, that's one thing I did miss. I, I did forget to, to add yeah. is um, I've got myself a Spotify playlist called a race day and it's got some fun songs on there like uh that one uh that one karate kid song it's like you're the best around <laughs> nothing's gonna ever get you down you're yeah. the best all that stuff and he plays I, that literally before every race oh yeah i have the tiger of course yeah you know the rocky theme song yeah a uh, little bit of family force five uh stuff in there sure. Eye on it by toby mack you know mm-hmm. uh pillar uh what's that pillar song i like to listen to before before a race uh um not not without a fight yeah Mm -hmm. not without a fight um just just motivating music just to get get yourself or do whatever it's good i mean music does it for me um but do whatever it takes for you to get yourself in a good mood and a confident mood before a race because honestly you want everything leading up to this race to be helping you perform well um, this is not the time to, to, uh, to stress yourself out. This is not the time to get yourself into arguments. This is not the time to, you know, have yourself have a negative attitude or to, to focus on things that you know are going to put you in a bad mood. Everything leading up to this race needs to get you on point and ready for that race. And so using music, using, you know, just a positive outlook, just preparing yourself at plenty of sleep. Uh, all of those things are important for you being in the best mood possible to be able to perform your best because confidence does go a long way with um, with these races. All right. So three takeaways from the actual race. Um, like I said in the last episode, I needed to be a better – not just better at running up the hills but better at walking up the hills. Mm, yeah. Um, and, and knowing the difference in, in uh, recruitment of my muscles in both of them. Uh, I, I did need to push myself a little bit harder. Mm. Uh, number two, I did, I did need to push myself a little bit harder. There were times that I was kind of um, planning and strategizing, um, which was not bad at all. And it did help me to move in front of the people that I wanted to move in front of. But um, ultimately, I could have pushed harder and I could have done better. Yeah. And then... Uh, I think... I think um, and, and anybody for, for that matter, but I think um, you can sometimes underestimate what you're capable of, of doing. Yeah. Definitely. Especially since I was so close to getting a better time. And if I had not failed the one obstacle that I failed, if I had, you know, run a little bit faster on this flat area, if I had walked a little bit better in the uphill, you know, like there's just a lot of things that I feel like I could have done better. In it. And I think being able to push yourself harder um, is fundamentally something that you have to do each and every race is that you've you've now set a new bar for yourself to how how much you want it how how much you're willing to push and you should always make sure that you're pushing yourself harder in the next race and it's it's really important to not sell yourself short in the race like i know sometimes you've said well as as long as i'm in front of the guy behind me yeah, you know it's yeah, good yeah, yeah. but the thing is that guy is behind you you know exactly. the people what in about front the of guy you. In front of me. Yeah. yeah. What, if, what about the guy that I could potentially pass up, and I was not thinking about that. The people who are and and you know t- understandably so. Of course, you're in the middle of the race. You're depleted. You're tired. Like totally. Of course, it, it makes sense. Um, but even the people who are 
um, getting first place and second place. Like those are the people you got to be like. Yeah, I, I, that by. is the that is the standard. That is the sure. bar. It's not this box that I put myself in yeah. uh, when I'm in the middle of the race and I realize, oh, this guy's around me. This guy's around me. Yeah, like, those are helpful tools to push yourself, mm-hmm. but you shouldn't put yourself in that box the yeah. whole race. You have to recognize that there's still someone else I can pass. There's still someone else I, I should be chasing after. Yeah. There's still more people to beat. And it happens. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. Especially, especially when you feel like you've been pushing your hardest and you want to yeah. give yourself that break. Your yeah, mind, yeah. Uh, your body, your mind is all going to be looking for, um, for places to go. Um, Escapes. Yeah. yeah. Places to go and excuses to make to, to not push as hard as you could potentially be pushing. Still human. Still human, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, letter three. Um, <laughs> uh, no, number three, I think. Um, I think coming into the race and coming out of the race with a professional perspective. Mm. Um, you're, you're there running these races. Um, one, one thing that I, I did try to do with this race, I tried to really have fun. I, I, re- mm. I did really try to have fun. Um, and I said, you know, it sounds kind of contradicting, like be a professional, but have fun. We're not here to have fun. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, the people in this, in the OCR community, they're really fun, crazy people. These are people oh, yeah. who devote their lives to pushing themselves into situations that are extremely difficult Mm. um, and forcing themselves to do things that are extremely difficult and they have fun while they do it. They're not suffering. They're not complaining. Mm. They're not whining. They're not uh, saying, Oh, I can't believe I have to do all this in order to, to be good at a sport or, you know, like, no, they, they genuinely have fun doing these things. Mm. Um, And they take chances in order to win cash prizes to be able to either provide for themselves and their families um, or just to get that prize of, uh, of the accomplishment of winning those races. And um, I think it does take this professional attitude of making sure that you don't just think, oh, that was, you know, that was a great race. You know, I did I did the best I could. Like, no, really look at your weaknesses, yeah. really look at your strengths and work on both of those so that you can be a better runner. You can be a better obstacle racer. You can, you can do better in the next race. Mm. And at the same time, make sure that you're having fun and building relationships and being a part of the OCR community Absolutely. so that you're not just, um, that you're not just being this, you know, this athlete who is no character, like it, people yeah. who watch this, this sport and this sport is growing. Um, people who are going to be watching the sport are going to be looking for people to root for Mm -hmm. people to identify with. Yeah. Um, and you cannot be someone that someone else will identify with if you do not bring forth a characteristic and identity and personality, um, that emulates, you know, that you're having a good time. Yeah. And, um, I think, and that's one of the biggest reasons why I think this was my best race as of yet was because I not only took all of the things that I've learned in my past races and improved on them and learned from them. But I also had a great time during this race. I had mm. a lot of fun. I even talked with one of the, one of the racers while I was running and said, you know, like, Hey, how you doing? And you know, you, you put up a good competition and you know, mm. uh, we, we were able to push each other. And of course I passed them, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but who's bragging, but yeah, but who's, who's, uh, who's counting places. But, um, yeah, so just being a professional and part of being that professional in the Oster community is just making sure that you are having fun and that you are looking at yourself as a racer as well as as a person and building um, a reputation for yourself in the community as someone who is improving themselves and also connecting with other people. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. Guys, I hope this was helpful uh, to those of you who decide to uh, do a Spartan race. Um, we're super excited about these new, uh, episodes of podcasts that we're going to be putting out that are going to be a little bit more topic focused for the, uh, for the average gym goer. We're going to be talking at length about questions that you may have going into the gym, especially because it's summertime. We're going to be getting a lot of new gym members, uh, going into their corporate gyms and, and, uh, signing up for personal training and Mm -hmm. doing things like that. Um, so we're excited to put forth for you more confidence. Uh, content that is specific to helping you perform better in the gym, um, as well as giving uh, extra content and bonus content uh, with 
how we're doing with training for the Spartan races and yes. uh, upcoming events as far as that with our, our business and the podcast and uh, other things like that. So super, super excited. Um, if you are interested in training with us in Whittier, California, make sure that you give us a, a call or a message or an email or you know just uh, wave hi over at the building <laughs> and you can find all that information at our instagram uh at act fitness academy or on our website www.actfitnessacademy.com and if you're just here for the podcast and free information here it's all cool uh make sure that you share this with a friend find somebody to share this with on your facebook on your instagram tag somebody in the instagram post that we have for act fitness radio and uh be sure to subscribe to the podcast so that you're so that you're updated on new, more new episodes. And if you like what you hear, go ahead and leave us a five star rating and review. And you might actually hear that review on the podcast. What? So leave us that five star rating review. We would absolutely much appreciate it. It, it is going to help other people get this awesome content as well as you. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for more to come. Bye. Take care.